Hello and welcome back to the shop. So I wanted to show this before I repurposed everything here. There's uh, some bronze and some stainless that's going to get turned into other stuff. But once upon a time it was the shaft on my sailboat, a 1972 Ericsson 29. And um, I thought some people who had never messed with one of these might be interested uh, to see how how do you have a propeller shaft going through a boat that uh, allows the shaft to turn and doesn't allow water in and additionally for those who know what this is this is a stuffing box and this is what makes it possible um, give a little cautionary tale on why you should disassemble the entire thing periodically because I'm going to show you something here in a second that was kind of alarming when I saw it but um, so uh, the reason I decided to do away with this whole system see these cracks here I decided that was you know I'll zoom in real quick and I I think they've been there since I bought the dog on boat, and I didn't realize it until I I never really uh, cleaned this all the way down. You know, when I did the bottom, but when I did this bottom job, I saw that. And I'll be honest with you, I noticed that this thing had a bend to it, and I thought that was by design because they actually design offset shafts in some application because uh, the way the mechanics work, uh, if you have a single propeller. It will tend to make the boat go one way or the other. So, uh, uh, you know, I thought it was deliberately bent, and I saw that, and I said, "Oh boy." So, I mean, that made it years and years without breaking. But, I mean, it's obviously not the way it was meant to be, and this whole system is getting old. And the cost of replacing all of this, and frankly, replacing or rebuilding the motor and all that, uh, the boat's just not worth it. So. I'm going to an outboard. Um, and so I have all these pieces and I'm you know I'm gonna melt down the, the bronze and cut up the shaft and make little bits and pieces out of it. So before I do that, here's how this works underneath of a boat. And this is about a tenth the size of what Keith Fenner usually works on. But uh, so this is where your propeller goes of course and uh, it's got a taper and then a, a nut. Um, this is uh, the strut that attaches to the hull and this in here is called a cutlass bearing and that should be replaced periodically mine you know you see it ends up scoring a little bit but I mean you can't really tell how much that scored because this would have to be cleaned first and I didn't do that so this is still looking like the way it was after I just scraped some barnacles off so that's uh, that's one point of rotation but that's permanently in the water so that's always getting a bath uh, now up here at the stuffing box and this I had to cut off to get it out of the boat because the uh, it was basically rusted right into the flange that goes let me uh, I'm not in the frame am I yeah there's a flange right here that bolts onto another flange and that's your motor over on that end so <clears throat> and uh, Keith Fenner was talking recently about how critical that alignment is right here uh, and uh, you know, he hears his customers say, "Hey, only I'm only a thousand off or something like that." And uh, he said, "Well, you realize a thousand once you go one, two, three feet out, or you know, some of his customers have ten foot shafts that gets propagated out to you know being many inches at the end. And uh, if you take think of all the forces involved, it's not something you want to play with." So he was advocating having a professional do your alignment. Uh, by which he meant himself, and I think you've got a point. Well, anyway, so we this is the point where it goes through the hull. So you can see here, no barnacles, barnacles. So salt water interior of the boat. The hull came down about like this, and obviously there was a there's a hole cut, and there was also a tube, fiberglass tube, glassed in at the hull right here. And that fiberglass tube uh, had 
a rubber hose that fit around it. It was the same diameter as this here, right? this bronze piece right here. Um, and then you had a piece of hose, which was just hose clamped. And that's how you create the watertight seal up to here. Now, this right here is what is the stuffing box. And this is the nut that's used to tighten it. So what you do, and obviously with the flange and all, you can't take this off all the way. But if you're just going to service this to, uh, you know, if it starts to drip a little bit, you can try, you know, this is a lock nut here, by the way. Um, you can try just giving it a turn or something and see if that puts it where you want it. Um, and if it's just, uh, if it's not working anymore, then, you know, uh, the other thing you can do is unscrew this. Now you got water pouring in, unless you did uh, this trick that uh, my friend said, you know, hey, or actually the guy I bought the boat from said, hey, what you do is you get the diver when he's cleaning the bottom to uh, put some wax from a toilet seal around the hull right here. That stops it up. You do what you need to do. Uh, and then you put the spec. So you, with the wax sealing it, if you're in the water or with it out of the water, and you pull this out, and you can actually pack some of the stuffing material down in here, which I don't have any here. I left it all at the boat, but this has got a lot packed into it. It comes in a roll. Let's see if anything will come out. There we go. Yeah. So, you know, it comes in a long roll, and what you have to do is wrap it around your shaft, figure out the uh, right length, take a razor blade, cut it, and then uh, bring your nut back on, tighten it all down, and now your seal's working again. So that's the you know, uh, fix in the field. But what you need to be doing on a periodic basis, like every like other time you haul the boat, or I don't know how often really, but at some point, which I don't think was ever done with this boat, um, you need to disassemble, you need to pull the shaft out. Um, and here's why. Holy cow. Let's see if there's a good reference. Good background. So you can see. That's not very good. I'll tell you what, I'll just get some calipers. Stand by. So how far off how far how deeply did that gouge itself into there? Now this shaft is three quarters, 0.75, dead on. This almost sixty thousandths of where. So, I mean that's uh, that's pretty horrible, and I mean that that's got to take a lot of strength out of the shaft. Um, so that's obviously not what you want in the shaft. That's you know your primary means of motor propulsion, at least, on your boat. So if you have power boat that has a through hull fitting like this rather than an outboard setup or an inboard outboard because uh, they have of course power boats have the same type of setup some of them uh, and most inboard every inboard sailboat has something like this um, you need to take it apart every once in a while and if you see anything like that then you need to replace the shaft that's all hope you enjoyed it So for giggles, I went ahead and measured the uh, the wear where the cutlass bearing 
uh, polishes the shaft here, so to speak. Fifteen thousandths. 